Unlimited power rights. Dennis had mentioned the Chinese title of GOTG. Why do other countries have different titles for the same film? Is it language? Well, I mean, I think it's just what they think is going to appeal. I mean, they have different posters, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, I mean, we joked about it before. They had a, I, forget, I think it was an Italian poster of uh, 12 Years a Slave, where it's like a tiny little Chiwetel Ejiofor, <laughs> who's like the main character, and a giant Brad Pitt head, you know? And I've seen, uh, I remember I was in Taiwan for uh, when District 9 was coming out there. And I think they had like multiple robots or something like that of, of uh, the, what was that, the... The mech mm -hmm. that uh, what's his face? Uh, I forgot his uh, the actor's name. The main guy in District Nine, uh, that mech suit. So it, there there wasn't one. So they just cater towards what their audience is. Mm -hmm. If you ever why countries can't get along, it's because we can't even agree on what the name of the movie is. It's just it's <laughs> like it's like you're playing a giant game of telephone, and I whisper something to Dennis. And by the time he gets around to another country, it's a completely different thing. It's kind of funny. Like when Batman and Robin came out in China, that was translated to uh, I, I believe it's it's an adult invites a little boy back to his cave to look at his codpiece. Like that was actually the way that it translated back into English, and that's from our legendary Bob Finstock from the Schmoes No Show. So Legendary. I, a lot of times <laughs> it just gets lost in translation. I think it's hilarious, but I can see, I, what was the Guardians of the Galaxy name that they translated it to? It was like un, the interstellar unusual attacking team or something like that. See, even that I would buy from Marvel. <laughs> if I'll buy that, I'll definitely buy Ant-Man. Copley, it was Copley. Yeah, Charlton Copley. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like, what was that? It was bothering me too. Yeah, you nailed it. I mean, these studios are in the business of making money, so they're going to geo-target accordingly, and they're going to see what tests well with audience, and they have a lot of people dedicated to solely that to see what will strike, you know, a chord with the right team members that will spend money on their film again and again, hopefully. So, yeah, it's very, very formulaic. It's a very, they have it down to a science. It doesn't always work, but at least their target audience, they do. I don't know how that Batman and Robin thing got through, though. I don't know how, at least they went with codpiece over bat nipples. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> oh. Also, that casting, casting, they do uh, with international in mind. For big budget movies, they mm -hmm. go, okay, does this person test well with international audiences? Because some people maybe that are big here aren't big over there. and so, Or some people who aren't as big as they used to be here are big internationally, so they'll, they'll still cast them. Yep, Stallone, exactly. Schwarzenegger. <laughs> yeah. Boom. What's next? Linus Babok wrote, what is your favorite underrated comedy? Mine is Blades of Glory. I do like Blades of Glory. <laughs> <laughs> um, underrated comedy. Oh, I got one. Bowfinger. Oh. With Steve Martin yeah. and Eddie Murphy. Oh, I was dying when I saw that in the theater. And it's, it still holds up, but people didn't watch it. It's a hysterical movie, and it's such a great satire of the entire community that we live in, yeah. in Hollywood. Uh, I'm going to go with, you've probably seen Airplane and think it's one of the classic movies of all time, and it is, and the Naked Gun franchise, okay. another film made by those guys that is ultimately my favorite of the bunch, is called Top Secret. It came out yes. in 1984, it stars Val Kilmer, it's a spoof on the Elvis-style movies where they just hire some famous singer to go be in a movie, and, and he goes through Nazi Germany, it's this crazy race, there's a cow involved prominently. It is one of the funniest movies you'll ever see. Definitely watch Top Secret. My pick is a little more obscure and definitely less popular. Um, I'm going to go with Little Nicky, baby. It is the most wow. bizarre movie ever. I definitely, that was like high school film. And it's so, Adam Sandler is so weird in it. And it's so funny. And there's so many weird, obscure moments. Like they're in hell and like all the cameos. And like, it's weird. I think it's underappreciated. Do I think it's a good movie? God, no. <laughs> no. But I do think that there's moments that are so just like, oh, just bizarre. That Rodney you Dangerfield that. as on, Grandpa so Satan is fantastic. And the first scene when you see little Nicky air guitaring in his room come to on. run with the devil, it doesn't get better than that. Papa's chicken is never chicken. You know, like, come on, it's so good. All right, one more. <laughs> that was so great. <laughs> Zane Ewing writes, hey guys, love this show. What band would you like a biopic of? For me, it's Aerosmith, thanks, and Bring the Filthy. I think if, if you've ever met me or spent five minutes with me, you know I desperately need to see anything that is Van Halen yeah, related. However, since they're my favorite band by such a wide margin, I almost don't want a biopic to be made of them. Mm -hmm. A, because I don't want all the mud flinging to start again. And you want it to be faithful to the actual band. And like, like VH1 did a Def Leppard biopic a few years ago. It just wasn't that good. And so I don't want to see my favorite band tarnished by a biopic. So it makes me nervous. So... Let's stick with maybe, you know what, let's do the Rolling Stones. 
Let's do the stones. Let's do Mick There's and Keith. There's a lot of color in that one, too, as well. I agree. Some of my favorite artists I won't even bring into the mix because I don't want them to damage it. Yeah. Um, the most logical choice to me right now is Michael Jackson because he's just like, and I feel like someone like Bruno Mars or someone with that amount of talent who can actually dance and sing could really do him justice. I mean, talk about, he was had a, such a sad life, but the most immense amount of talent. So I feel like that just lends itself perfectly to a really good bio pick um and rolling stones would be good uh, my favorite band pearl jam i'd like to see a biopic of i they they had cameron crow did a documentary on them mm. called 20. 20. It, it was, was so really good. good it was so good but there was parts of it i know that were missing because he's friends with them mm -hmm. and with being friends you kind of skip over some of the bad stuff you know the stuff that makes them not look so good yeah. and i kind of when it comes to biopics we talked about this before yeah. about biopics with musicians or anyone I don't like when they skip over the bad part, the negative things about the person or the group or whatever. They holidize it. Exactly. And so even for some, you know, a band that I love, I still want to see the truth, you know? And so hopefully, you know, with whatever bands that I want to see in the future, they don't do that. God, that show we saw. Oh, yeah. Eddie Vedder's the man. They played for three hours with no breaks. I just like. It and we was saw Miles Teller. Miles Teller. I forgot to Oh, tell it's him. weird. I, I didn't get like a text or a, <laughs> like a phone call or anything. It's... You, you will next time, promise. Disneyland's coming. <laughs> hey, everyone. If you like this video, click that thumbs up button and make sure to subscribe to our AMC Movie News YouTube channel. It's free and helps you stay up to date with all the latest movie news, as well as our daily AMC movie talk show. Also, make sure that you follow us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with all of our special promotions, contests, and prize giveaways.